Psalm 100 says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving in your hearts. And enter his courts with praise. Today I'm reading from Psalm 100. It's entitled, A Psalm for Giving Thanks. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. I'm reading this on Monday the 8th of June 2020. 100 days have passed since the first case of COVID-19 was identified in this country. The rest, as they say, is history. But it's an intensely personal history. It is marked with pain, with anguish and anxiety that has followed in the wake of this cruel and contagious disease that has devastated 1,679 families to date through bereavement. It has separated countless other families through restrictions in travel and meeting. It has devastated businesses and industries, many of which may not recover. We are, of course, beginning to emerge from the lockdown as new infections are reducing and death is becoming less common. Today marks the beginning of phase two of emerging from the lockdown as more businesses and shops reopen. So against this background, is it really appropriate to be singing songs of joy, to worship the Lord with gladness and to come before him with joyful singing, as the psalm suggests? Well, first we need to understand the joy is not the same as happiness. Happiness is a fleeting emotion. Nobody could be happy with the destruction that we've seen and the loss of life or the misery that has come with it. We could be happy, I suppose, with the way things are improving. But that's the point. Happiness changes by the moment, by the day, according to the circumstances we're faced with. Joy is altogether different. Joy takes a longer view, a broader view of what is happening. It recognizes that underpinning all of human experience is a God who knows and loves us, not just in this moment, but throughout eternity. The NIV Quest Study Bible says this, happiness is often temporary. Joy is more of a process, often developed most profoundly during periods of chaos and suffering. The deep sustaining joy of the Lord comes from an assurance that he is with us and will deliver us from present difficulties as well as the evil, sin and suffering of this world. Such joy is able to express its hope even in the middle of legitimate sadness. This is why the Bible can declare that the joy of the Lord is my strength. The writer of this psalm does not ignore, belittle or sweep aside suffering, but rather offers us a firm foundation on which to build, making us resilient, strong and giving us the basis for joy. The source of the writer's confidence is found in the final verse of this psalm. For the Lord is good and his, joy, his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. This is a God worth knowing, worth serving. The psalm says of God that he made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. This idea of God as shepherd and his people as sheep is repeated many times in scripture and it's a helpful analogy. Sheep are very dependent animals. They need a shepherd to protect them, to guide them to good pasture and to water. Like sheep, people need someone to follow. When people follow the Lord, they find spiritual safety and nourishment. And this is the source of joy and the inspiration for praise and thanksgiving. Psalm 100 encourages us 
to come into God's presence, to meet with him, to know him personally. I've always imagined that this psalm would be sung by groups of people making their way to the temple. I could imagine them giving thanks as they went through the gates, singing praise of the temple courts, perhaps using one of the songs inspired by this verse. It's been a long time since we've been able to enter, enter into the courts of this building to sing praises together, and it will be another month before we can do so again. In the meantime, this center of worship has been repurposed for the use of the food bank, and what better way to use the house of God. But this psalm isn't about the temple or about any sacred building. It's about the presence of God and how we draw near to God with thanksgiving and with praise. We thank him for what he has done. We praise him for who he is and we trust him for all that is to come. To do this intentionally, regularly and humbly can become part of the rhythm of life for those who love God and seek after him. James, thought to be the brother of Jesus, writes in his epistle, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. This is what we need in these times of trouble. May God bless you as you seek to enter his presence with thanksgiving and his courts with praise.